Hey everyone, good afternoon and greetings from fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Found some cheap airfare, got a free room, so I figured, hey, why not head out to Vegas for about 36 hours? This video here, I'm going to show you everything that I do. Food, drinks, gambling, uh, attractions, some uh, immersive art stuff I really want to go and check out. And uh, first things first, I am really hungry. I just got off the plane, checked into a hotel. Let's go find some food. I went across the street to grab my lunch here at Dirt Dog. This is something I really wanted to check out. They specialize in a variety of bacon wrapped hot dogs. And then they also have crazy looking fries. We got the TUI dog, pastrami carne asada, cheddar cheese, chipotle aioli, and bacon bits. Alrighty, and here it is. That is some hot dog. Which is good because I'm pretty hungry. Well, uh, some of that aioli was a little bit spicy. So I figured I'd come over here, something I wanted to check out anyway, and that's the Stage Door Casino, a dive bar just off the strip. They've got $1 beers, so I'm gonna drink a dollar beer, then hop in an Uber to my next destination. Cool view of the, uh, the Ferris wheel over here. Definitely a no frills kind of joint, but uh, hey, $1 beers, and a lot of Vegas is so flashy and, and expensive. It's kind of cool to go somewhere that's a, uh, you know, just a neighborhood dive bar right near the strip. Waiting for my lift to come grab me and pick me up and head over to Area 15. Uh, the construction off in the distance for the new MSG Sphere, which is going to be this insane concert venue here in Las Vegas. I think it's like two billion dollars. It looks really wild. I think it opens next year. And I made it over to Area 15, which is home to a whole bunch of different immersive art stuff. Last time I was out in Vegas, I did the Lost Spirits Distillery, which is amazing. One of my favorite things in town. Also went to Meow Wolf, which I thought was cool as well. Uh, today I'm going to try some other stuff, including liftoff which is their bar that floats into the sky let's give, try that one first greetings from the top drinking a mango cart but not only am i drinking a mango cart i'm doing it like 200 feet in the air uh, cool view of las vegas terrifying view down that is horrifying i've built one of these before at park asterix over in france um i think they're fantastic the ride itself costs ten dollars the beer actually cost me 11 so uh, you get a cool view of the strip and then a cool view of the mountains off in the distance outside of area 15 they actually have a really really cool uh, sculpture garden obviously this, this is just free to walk into if you want to see these sculptures i'm gonna head on into here the infinity ship number one <laughs> And now it's like a, a never-ending mirror. Oh, and it's got fun lights. The fun lights simply help. There's a mirror. And it's got music. Well, that's, that's cool. And I have made it inside Area 15. If you haven't been over here before, it's actually a really cool spot. Lots of different kind of very modern attractions. The big anchor is Meow Wolf's Omega Mart, but there are other things to do here as well. And there are uh, some bars. And I think there's somewhere to get food. I think they get food right here. I love this sign here for Rocket Fizz. While inside of Area 15, I tried two different art experiences. Both of them cost $18 a piece. The first one was my favorite, that was Wink World, which was built by one of the co-founders of Blue Man Group. And you could tell that during the experience, like the music sounds very, very Blue Man Group. And this is kind of like six small rooms, each one's around three minutes each, and then your door opens to lead you into the next room. And they're all sort of different takes on infinity, using a lot of mirrors and lights, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought that one was pretty cool. I would recommend checking that one out. The other one I went to was Museum Fiasco, which is just one big room, probably about a 12 minute show. And it's just like lights and haze and mirrors. That one I would say was just okay. If you're gonna choose between the two, definitely go to Wink World. Area 15 is also home to an arcade bar. It's got all the classics, The Simpsons, Turtles in Time. I'm playing different types of movies, NBA Jam, X-Men. I, uh, I always enjoy bar. Ooh, Street Fighter 2. I always like bars like this. Area 15, pretty cool as always. Now I'm waiting for my lift in a uh, giant beanbag chair. This is actually pretty relaxing. That's the shade. Just got out of my Uber here in downtown Las Vegas, Fremont Street, as there's a couple different things I wanted to check out down here on this trip. Uh, last trip, I didn't come to Fremont Street at all, so definitely a couple on the hit list. I always say it, one of these times when I'm in Vegas, I'm gonna stay here at the Golden Nugget, just for their pool. Their pool looks amazing. 
that has a water slide you can see there that goes to a fish tank with sharks in it. Like that is for me as a guy that likes more like attractions, like that's an awesome looking water slide. Came to the Golden Nugget because I wanted to go to the Shark House for their happy hour, which is Monday to Friday, four to six. But all the bar tops are taken. And uh, I mean, you can have a drink and watch the fish, but if all the bar stops are taken, like, I don't want to sit around and wait for somebody to maybe leave. And now made it out to the very loud Fremont Street experience. There's a band playing, people wandering around. It is always quite the place. Uh, Circa is the new hotel, so I figure I'm going to go check that one out. One of the main reasons I wanted to come in here, they restored Vegas Vicky. There's like a famous neon sculpture or person that used to be outside on Fremont Street. Now it's inside, fully restored. It looks fantastic. Big centerpiece here too with the elevators. Over at the end of Fremont Street, you do have the Plaza Hotel, uh, which was famously Biff's in Back to the Future too. And uh, they're doing some major renovations down here. Adding what I'm very interested in down there, underneath the steakhouse, they're adding a carousel bar. This is pretty neat here on Fremont Street. There's a whiskey liquor up and down bar, and it rotates. That is so cool. I mean, it's a very slow rotation, but uh, there's some pretty good people watching from up there, I imagine. One final look at the big canopy here on Fremont Street. I'm not going to be here dark enough for you to get the full enjoyment out of it, but still, it's still neat to see. Man, I don't know if there's something that would make me want to go into a bar less than home of the famous habanero pickle bag. Oh, that's two things I don't really enjoy. My next up is going to be the El Cortez. Uh, I saw a promotion online where if you show me your boarding pass from your flight, uh, you get some free play. I'll give that a whirl. Yeah, that was a really good deal here at the El Cortez. So you show your boarding pass and you get a player's club card. And then you get a $25 match play for, for blackjack or roulette, a $10 free play, and a free drink. And that's pretty good. I'm up 50 bucks. Here's a gimmick restaurant, if I've ever seen it. The Heart Attack Grill, where if you weigh over 350 pounds, you eat for free. I'm not going to eat there, but hey, there's a brewery right next door. And I do not pass up some crap beer. So Banger Brewery is pretty good. I had like, um, I do a lot of five ounce pours, so I had six five ounce pours. Bill came to around $25, but they had really interesting beers. Like there was a pumpkin spice coffee Kolsch, a Hefeweizen aged in Chardonnay barrels. So they had some really interesting stuff in there. In the Neon office area, there is a movie prop shop, and like movie prop museum, with a uh, very poorly decaled Jurassic Park Jeep. But I do like that Beast from X-Men First Class is sitting behind the counter. All right, time to leave downtown Vegas and head off to the Tiki Bar. Making my way back towards the Strip, but I have to stop in at one of my favorite Tiki Bars. Las Vegas is home to two great Tiki Bars. Uh, Golden Tiki, the more themed Tiki Bar. Frankie's Tiki Room, the Tiki Bar with the better mugs. Both have really good drinks. This time, I'm going to Frankie's. In the Tiki Room now, enjoying a zombie. And uh, I, I do enjoy Frankie's. Uh, not as flashy as the other ones, but they do. You can't really see it. It's way too dark in here, as the Tiki Bar should be. They have like the best mugs. They're all like $25. Plus a drink cost $14. Uh, so yeah, awesome place. First lady. Was very, very happy to get to see the Volcano Eruption Show at the Mirage. You know, the Mirage, it got sold. It's being sold to the people that own the Hard Rock brand. They're going to change the Mirage into a big Hard Rock hotel. And unfortunately, they are going to get rid of the iconic Volcano and replace it with a big, giant guitar hotel, just like the one in Fort Lauderdale. Can't blame them for that. Like, that guitar hotel is going to make tons of money. Uh, the Volcano costs a lot of money. I'm not sure how much it brings in. But as a Las Vegas visitor, I was really happy that I got to see the Volcano Eruption Show one last time. Not sure when this is going away, but uh, probably sometime shortly after that deal closes. After taking in probably my final viewing of the Volcano Show at the Mirage, we're going to cross the street to Casino Royale to get a $3 foot-long hot dog. Quite the dog. For my final stop, I wanted to hit tonight. It's actually a, a casino I don't think I've ever been in before, and that is Bally's. I've been here in the food court area. I was here today. But I've never actually been inside. There's actually some rather nice parts to the Bailey's Hotel. But I have found my bar, the one I wanted to go to, the Cabinet of Curiosities. 
Big thumbs up to the Cabinet of Curiosity Park. Kind of like drinking in a Ripley's Museum. I am drinking the Cabinet, which is their own specialty beer made locally by the Huddle Brewery. And they got comfy care. A couple of neat things here at Valley. We do have a National Geographic, a rarely seen photograph. It's like an immersive exhibit. It's like $35. They also have a, a real bodies exhibit. Like both those things I don't have much interest in. And then over here, something I would probably play if Molly was here, there is a Twilight Zone Blacklight Mini Golf Course. That is fun. We're probably gonna start to head back to the hotel, start the go to sleep process. That's been up for a long time. But uh, Valley's is connected to Paris. And uh, like this hallway is fantastic. The Paris Hotel is also home to not quite Optimus Prime and his best friend, not quite Bumblebee. The Paris Hotel is another one I have not spent a lot of time in, but man, it is a pretty hotel. And that'll do it for my evening here in Las Vegas. I'm obviously staying here at the Bellagio with a, a room that views the fountains, which is actually uh, rather pleasant. I did not expect this. Uh, normally, as, as you, if you follow the channel, I don't normally stay at fancy hotels. Uh, this one I got for free by playing the, the My Vegas series of apps, so I definitely recommend you do that. Um, a couple of things I'll get for free up from My Vegas on this trip. But yeah, I uh, did not expect a a fountain view room and it's kind of relaxing because like I'm gonna have some snacks uh, work on some video stuff and I'll watch the fountains for my room and the room is uh, obviously it's gonna be very very nice big bed big giant TV snacks and waters that you would have to buy and I'm most certainly not going to do that very fancy marble flooring and a giant shower for me to have, well, all to myself. In both sinks if I want to use them. All right, that'll do it for tonight. Tomorrow, lots of other fun stuff I want to go see before flying out around midnight. Hey, and good morning from Las Vegas. Just wanted to show this off. There's the buttons for the curtains. I just think it's like the coolest thing. Slept in after what was a very long travel day yesterday. But my flight out is not until midnight, it's about 10 a.m. now. So uh, getting ready to go out and explore the city. And it's a pretty cool view to wake up to. Love the uh, automatic blinds. Also found this really weird in the bathroom. There's a, a toilet phone in case you have to make any calls while you're on the toilet. Before leaving the Bellagio and heading out on my day, got to check out what's going on in the conservatory this time of year. Right now it's fall in the conservatory, and uh, they, they do it three or four different shows a year, depending on the season, and it's always beautiful. Really like all the water features on this uh, round in the conservatory, including one based on falling water. The big centerpiece is really cool. And one final section to show off over here. This one I like because it's got a big LED screen background. The Bellagio is also home to this crazy chocolate fountain. Uh, it was done by a gentleman named Gene Felipe, who also does work on the MSC cruise lines. Just got out of the Uber, made it to my next destination. Going to a museum called Perception, which I believe is like immersive art and projections. And they've got an exhibit all about Leonardo da Vinci. The Da Vinci exhibit was really cool. It was donated into three different rooms, kind of like two pre-show rooms. Uh, the first pre-show room, very, very different. There's like uh, pictures of the Mona Lisa, like six different pictures of the Mona Lisa, but they all change. Like she'll turn into robots or blocks or start talking to you. Uh, very interesting. The second room was kind of a simple, very crystal heavy room with a, almost a 360 projection. And then the main show was about a 30 minute production in a giant, giant room. And each segment takes you into different areas of Leonardo da Vinci. So the philosopher, the inventor, the architect, the painter. 
And I thought it was a really cool experience, especially that big room. I was in there by myself, so that was really nice, not having any annoying people or screaming kids or anything like that. And yeah, it was pretty fun. I will say very expensive though. It was about $40 for me to go and do this experience. And it was located all the way at the end of the strip. So if, um, if you would like what you see, it might be worth going to check out, but it is a kind of a hike to get to and then a hike to your wallet. <laughs> the giant clown sign for Circus Circus is uh, really, really something else. I don't have time to stop by the Circus Circus today. Even though, I mean, that's lots of fun. One dollar beers and one dollar hot dogs. But I want to go check out the newest resort on the Strip, and that is Resorts World. Made it inside Resorts World, and the air conditioning is very cool. You're welcome by a, a sculpture of the Stardust, which is the famous hotel that was originally on these grounds. And then there's like this giant projection globe. And it's gotta be like 30 feet tall or so. Sculptures as well. It'd probably be neater if it didn't just show like ads for things in the hotel. I think it might do a show or something once an hour. This section is very, very pretty. It's a very cool piece of art. A Volkswagen Beetle turned into a sphere. One more view of the big corridor here at Resorts World with the uh, giant globe icon in the middle. There is a quick service food restaurant called Sun's Out, Bun's Out. And uh, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. You probably know what's coming. Yep. The little mascot guy, his buns are indeed out. The food court here is really cool. It's uh, like an international market and there's tons of different options. Uh, very snazzy. There's a big giant lucky cat spinning around. In the middle of the food court is something I love, a pour your own beer bar. These things are great. Resorts World does have their entrance to the Vegas Loop. I believe this section is open. Eventually the Vegas Loop is going to be this mass transit system using tunnels to get people all over Las Vegas. All the way from like the airport, the strip, and downtown. I know that I'm thinking, you know, it's a project that's probably going to take a lot of time, but when that's done, that's going to be fantastic. Lunchtime, I'm going to eat at a Las Vegas institution, Tacos El Gordo. That's why I didn't eat that really, really cool food court. And if you're curious where this is, it is right across the street from Resorts doing? World. Yeah, dude. And it's crazy street. All right, so you order based on what kind of meat you want. Like there's a line for pork, a line for steak, a line for french fries. I went with the steak quesadilla. Ended up being about $7. The steak is cooked fresh, the carne asada, and the cheese looks fantastic. After that delicious, kind of a snack, I wouldn't say that was a full meal. I've also heard Tacos El Pastor right nearby is also very good. Grab myself a nice walking beer for a, like $2.50 at one of these little stores. And now I'm making my way down the strip. There's some absolutely beautiful waterfalls here at the wind, right by the entrance. Really cool construction shot of the MSG sphere. As I made it to my next destination, the Grand Canal shops here at the Venetian and the Palazzo. That's a uh, pretty cool. And if I turn around, even more cool stuff. And I made it to the canal section of the Grand Canal shops. The first time I've been in the Venetian since uh, me and Molly went to Venice over the summer. Amazing city, one of my favorites in the world. And if you want to go on a gondola ride here, it is just about as expensive as if you wanted to go on one in actual Venice. And it's shorter. Thanks for playing the My Vegas series of apps. I got a free ticket to Madame Tussauds. So I'm going to run in there and see if there's anything interesting. So this is definitely new here in the party room. You've got The Rock in front of his Terramana Tequila Bar. Now I'm guessing this is probably like a bar that functions at some point. It looks like it has that, but uh, you know, just like he does on social media, tipping out his tequila brand. And I thought they pretty good. Me and Molly have a bottle of the house. I do love the Las Vegas room in this Madame Tussauds. I've been doing it's my fair share of wax museum, but having this many local celebrities, I think it's pretty cool. The whole character is also fantastic. So at the end of Men of Two Soaps, there was a 4D film, like a 10 minute 4D film, with all the Avengers in it. And it's uh, an animated movie, it was set in Las Vegas, it was pretty fun. Now heading into the Mirage. Well, this is a bit of a bummer. I did come into the Mirage to go to the Secret Garden of Secret and Roy, but it is um, closed. 
So that's a bit of a bummer. I assume once the Hard Rock takes over, this will not be staying, so I wanted to go for uh, one last walkthrough and see the tigers and lions and dolphins, but not to be. I, but on the plus side, it saves me $25. I have always enjoyed the tropical lobby area of the Mirage. Assuming once the big guitar hotel comes in, this is probably going away as well, but it's just so tranquil. So the time right now is about 2.40. I've got a show at 6 p.m. So i got some time to just kind of wander around. I'm going to go into the beautiful forum shops here at Caesar's Palace. Out of the fancy malls in Vegas, I do prefer the forum shops here at Caesar's as they do have stuff that's more like some more normal shops. So there's going to be some really expensive stuff too. I'm bummed Molly's not with me on this one because we would definitely have done that. They've got a Rugrats escape room. I've seen the pictures of it and it looks just like it does in the cartoon, like you're stepping in the cartoon. Looks so awesome. Also, they've got a Planet Hollywood here. Did not know that. visiting Vegas on Tuesday or Wednesday is that they, uh, the big fall of Atlantis, the cheesy animatronic show, well, it doesn't run on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, so can't go see my robot friends. So I didn't get to see an animatronic brandishing a flaming sword, but at least all the fish are here. I believe Caesars recently redid their front entrance area, and uh, it looks great. Really great. If you've ever watched the sports gambling show on ESPN, it films right there. All right, roller coaster people, on this ad here for the Link Promenade, in an ad for a virtual reality attraction, there is a spinning roller coaster. And uh, I'm not sure which one it is. I'm sure one of you guys know. I was craving a Fat Tuesday drink, so I went over to uh, Casino Royale to grab one. They have a 190 octane cherry flavored, which is the one we don't have at Universal Orlando, so I had to grab that. A large drink was $15 before tip. And while at Casino Royale, I couldn't resist the temptation to come and get a White Castle slider. On the Link Promenade, looks like there's now a museum of selfies. Don't have time to see that one today, but sometimes these are interesting. Sometimes they're cheap and junky. While I'm over here, might as well head into the Flamingo. These guys kind of remind me of the, uh, the new giant Flamingo that's the Tampa International Airport. Obviously, these have been here a lot longer. And here's why I love coming into the Flamingo. They got a free wildlife enclosure where they got a couple different species of birds. So hanging out, I'm enjoying my Fat Tuesday spring and watching some beautiful flamingos. The Flamingo has a 21 and up pool with a DJ and uh, yeah, that seems like a really good time. Drinks, music, waterfall. Decided to spend $5 and save my feet and take the Las Vegas monorail from the Flamingo over to the MGM Grand. You know, I probably could have made the walk, but it's been so much walking today. And uh, you know what? Monorails are just, they're neat. Monorails are neat. That's my thought. And here it comes. Pretty fun in the MGM Grand. They have a, uh, like a country western bar. And then at uh, 4 o'clock on a Wednesday, somebody's playing live music. I'm having a hard time trying to find the MGM Rewards desk, but I did find the David Copperfield Theater. Wouldn't mind seeing his show on One Trip to Vegas. I saw him a very, very, very long time ago when I was a kid at uh, Nassau Coliseum. So I did finally find the MGM Rewards desk. I kept in a, like a free whiskey and a jar cocktail at this whiskey down bar. And they gave me this coupon worth something um, up to $25. Or so. Well, that's something good over here. Well, that was a pretty good reward. I got the, uh, the Ballotin chocolate whiskey on the rocks. And look at that pour! Well, through the intern will be very happy. Raising Canes is now on the Las Vegas Strip over here by the MGM Grand. So this bums me out. I know things in Vegas don't last very long, but Arcadia Earth was another immersive art exhibit, and uh, it wasn't open when we were here in January. It opened sometime in the winter and has already closed permanently. So I guess we'll never see that here in Vegas. I think there's another location in New York City. 
After my time at the MGM Grand, went to, on the strip to go to the ABC store, get myself a giant white claw. Now trying to make my way over towards Excalibur for the show tickets I have. And I do like this view because like you get the mountains in the background at what is about golden hour. It's a pretty good view. Uh, any of these kind of overpasses on the strip, you get some pretty sweet views. And if you look this way, you got the giant Coca-Cola bottle, which uh, that store oddly closed at like four o'clock today. And then you got the New York, New York, and of course the roller coaster in New York, New York. Now I do think uh, after they put the new trains on it, it is a much better ride. But I also feel like if RMC started uh, RMCing old busted steel coasters, that might be my very first choice. And there it is, the Excalibur. I uh, got a free ticket to the Tournament of Kings dinner and show. Essentially, their their version of a medieval times, and uh, yeah, through the the My Vegas series of apps, I definitely recommend you play those. We're not sponsored; it's just something I like to do. It's kind of a fun game to play anyway. Then you get like sweet rewards in Vegas or on a cruise ship. All right, from the entrance of the show, it's actually located down here in the Fun Dungeon Arcade. Which, um, if you haven't been, it's actually a really cool arcade. A combination of like midway games and arcade games, and some stuff I actually haven't seen before. Like, I don't believe I've seen the Men in Black arcade game. are different countries except for Dragon. Dragon is not a real country. I'm here representing the fine people of Norway. Merlin. Norway. That's me. Merlin is welcome to the show. Chester are no, teaching everyone sure a chance. Uh, dinner has been served. It's a Cornish game, game hen, some potatoes, a roll, and pour on the cob.
Tournament of Kings was okay. Um, I think it's a great option if you have kids in Las Vegas. Personally, I'm happy I didn't have to pay for it. I would probably not return unless I have free tickets again. And would say like, yeah, Cirque du Soleil is definitely more my jam. We're going to see a concert. Just wandering around before I had to call my lift to the airport. And unfortunately, it looks like one of my favorite dumb, dumb, dumb things in Vegas is now gone for good. The Eminem's World, uh, they used to have a free 3D movie on the third floor. All the signage has been removed. This, this was a weird film. Like, uh, one of the M&Ms lost their M and ended up in like the land of lost socks. It was so bizarre. But it was also free, so like, it was kind of neat. My time in Vegas is starting to run out, so uh, I walked through the Park MGM. I'm gonna take the free monorail to get back to the Bellagio. It runs in a very similar system to the uh, Hogwarts Express at Universal. From the Bellagio monorail station, you get a really cool view of the Aria at night. And uh, there you can kind of see the system on which this monorail traverses. That, ten, uh, that um, piece of steel wire right there that'll run back and forth and pull the monorail in either direction. So, like I was talking about with the Hogwarts Express. But uh, man, pretty at night. And that'll do it for my time in Las Vegas. It was a whirlwind 36 hours. Did a whole bunch of stuff. I love getting out to Vegas. I think it's just an awesome place to go and wander around and see so many things, do so much stuff, you know, have a drink, just grab a beer and wander through some of these giant hotels. Uh, I had some good food. I think that uh, that Dirt Dog hot dog, the bacon wrap one, I think that was my favorite thing I ate. Um, as far as drinks, it was probably the zombie from Frankie's, but I'm a Tiki Room guy. Anyway, love my experience in Las Vegas. Was thrilled to go check out those three different immersive art exhibits. And there we go. If you have any questions about Las Vegas, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching this video.